welcome to today's Oracle Machine Learning Office Hours feature highlight. Our topic today is how to store and manage named R and Python user-defined functions in autonomous database with our guest speaker, uh, Nicholas Gusato. I'm your host, Mark Hornick, along with Sherry LaMonica. As a brief announcement, you may also be interested in joining us for the upcoming session, Using R at Scale on Database Data, sponsored by the R Consortium, of which Oracle is a member, as part of its first R database webinar series. Sherry and I will discuss ways of interacting with database data, highlighting Oracle, R, uh, Oracle Machine Learning for R. It's this Thursday, December 8th at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and you can register at the URL shown there. So back to today's session, where we'll take a more in-depth look at the OML script repository, its features, and API. Nick will provide an overview of the feature, uh, its interfaces and usage, and then a demonstration. And as always, if you have questions, please post them in the Q&A, and we'll address them during the session or at the end. Before we get started, though, let's hear from you regarding your level of familiarity with the OML script repository. Would you say that you've used it in production solutions, experimented with it for a proof of concept or run the sample notebooks? Or maybe you're familiar with it, um, but haven't used it, or perhaps interested in just finding out what this is all about. So we're seeing the poll coming in. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, a lot of folks are just interested to find out what this feature is all about. About a quarter of you are familiar with what it is, but haven't used it. And about 15% have experimented with it for proof of concept or others, and a few have actually used it in production uh, solutions. Uh, so that's really fantastic. Thanks for the feedback. And now we will get started uh, with Nick's presentation. Nick, please take it away. All right. Thank you, Mark. I'm going to share my screen. All right, hello and welcome to the OML Office Hours session. My name is Nicholas Casado or Nick. I am supporting the Oracle Machine Learning team and today we'll be covering the Oracle Machine Learning Script Repository and its purpose for saving R and Python user-defined functions for use across database sessions and for passing embed R and Python execution functions as part of the Oracle machine learning functionality. So first I wanna say thank you for joining us today. And to add some color before we get started, I'm, I'm a solution engineer for Nash, North America Specialist Hub, and I spent a lot of time developing and demoing emerging technologies for customers and product development. And sometimes, uh, something that I've recently noticed is that sometimes I joke that I've got an ever-growing private repository of code that I'm too embarrassed to publish publicly. Well, it's only partly true. It's actually multiple repositories. It's all spread out amongst notebooks and sessions, and sometimes it's difficult to retrieve these quickly or even share with others. You know, it, and until I discovered OML's script repository, it sort of simplified the way that I develop on OML. So today I'm excited to show you, you know, how we accomplish this with uh, OML script repository. So let's start with a, a quick agenda for today's session. First, we will briefly review Oracle Machine Learning for R and Python and explain the script repository capabilities. And then next, we'll go into some examples and cover the APIs and functions associated with the OML script repository. And then lastly, we'll open the notebooks environment and demonstrate or walk through a few examples and finish with Q&A. How does that sound? All right, let's start with an overview of Oracle Machine Learning for R and Python before we cover the script repository. You know, we can't put the cart in front of the horse. And with OML support for R and Python open source environments, Oracle Database serves as the HPC environment for support invoking functions from the R and Python interfaces. And OML supports parallelized and distributed processing of in-database machine learning algorithms that are exposed through a natural and R and Python interfaces. And these R and Python interfaces allow users to store native R and Python objects in the database using the data store and save user-defined functions or UDFs in the database script repository. 
Finally, users can invoke UDFs not only from the R and Python, but also using SQL and REST API to integrate results with applications and dashboards. Now, let's actually move forward to the OML script repository. And R and Python user defined functions are similar to R and Python objects. They exist only for the duration of the current session unless explicitly saved. And the Oracle Machine Learning Script Repository enables these users to save the R and Python uh, functions to the script repository and then load those user-defined functions in a subsequent R Python session and then use those UDFs via embedded execution. The Oracle Machine Learning Script Repository enables the users to you know, save and manage R and Python UDFs in the user's database schema to persist in the database until they're deleted. Or they can load R or Python UDFs for use across database sessions or for use in nested name functions, which is really cool. Grant or revoke read access to script repositories, uh, UDFs to other database users. Um, and then most importantly, you can invoke UDFs in the script repository for embedded execution via the SQL API or with OML for R and OML for Pi. As you can see here, it is really simple. Here's a small snippet of what I'm going to go into. First, we build the model, and then we store it in the repo, saying some parameters, and then we can retrieve this model. Now, you might be wondering, if I'm storing my scripts in a repo, who could see this? So it's important to understand the difference between private and global scripts. And the answer might be obvious. For a private script, only those with access can retrieve it, while a global script is available to all users. So maybe the next question is, how do I grant access to a private script? Well, when you store a script in the repository and you don't specify global, then you need to use ORI grant to uh, to, uh, to give access to specific users. And then the same can be used for uh, revoking access. So we're using ORI revoke and a user's privilege can be removed. And here you see that I'm performing these commands in R and we'll also do this in Python and then also SQL, which I'll show you on the next slide. So in case you missed it, uh, a UDF is either private or global and private is default so you need to specify so here on the right i'm specifying in sql two different uh, udfs in a single script with a, a false parameter um, now if i declare true then it would be available globally so any user can read it but because it's false then I'd have to perform you know simple grant read privileges um, hope that's clear if you have any questions feel free to throw them in the chat All right, now that we've walked through um, you know, some use cases, let's demonstrate how the script repository could be used as an embedded function. And then let's start with two user-defined functions. First, the first function, build LM1, uh, builds a linear model, then saves the function um, into the script repository named build LM1. And then the next function, score LM1, um actually scores the data you know labeled with the parameter dat and using the model loaded from the specified data store using the dsn name um, parameter and we'll we'll actually save this function as well in the script repository for use in embed execution name score lm1 and since we're talking about the data store we actually did an ask tom session on it several weeks ago, and I highly recommend checking it out. There's a lot of detail in how the, uh, these data stores work, so feel free to use that URL um, to access it. All right. Now that our um, functions are saved in the script repository, we can invoke them using the SQL API um, using embed execution. The first paragraph invokes build LM1. Uh, through the RQ table eval um, two function. And the build LM1 function 
creates a linear model using the iris data table and then saves the model to DS equal one. And then next we can conduct scoring on the model by invoking the score LM1 um, from the script repository. And then score LM1 will load the model saved into DS equal one and score 50 more rows per invocation. And then use this medium service level, as you can see here, to enable multiple R engines to work in parallel. I think we're ready for our second poll. Indeed. All right. So uh, with our second poll, you know, which aspects of the script repository do you find uh, uh, most compelling? Select all that apply. Uh, perhaps it's to store and manage user defined R and Python functions uh, in the database or invoke uh, R and Python UDFs from SQL or REST through the embedded execution feature. Uh, maybe it's handoff R or Python functions among team members the ability for administrators to install UDFs in production systems, perhaps using SQL, uh, something that IT administrators might uh, naturally uh, gravitate toward, or leverage database security to store our Python UDFs and avoid flat files. Um, so we've got a pretty much an even uh, adoption of this. Uh, certainly the highest one here at almost 75% is to store and manage user-defined functions uh, in the database. Uh, about two-thirds of you are looking to invoke R and Python UDFs uh, through embedded execution. And uh, over half, uh, leveraging the database security to store R and Python uh, UDFs and avoid using flat files. And about you know, more than a third are uh, the other two handing off R and Python solutions among team members and having administrators install UDFs in production. So thank you for that feedback. And back to you, Nick. Thanks, Mark. It's great to learn. All right. Uh, this is the list of functions for managing scripts in the script repository and first we have the create function for both r python sql and which registers the udfs into the repository uh, then we have a load functions to load the udfs in the in the repository in the session so um, we also have list functions that list the udfs for the the script repository and then if you want to drop a udf from the script repository, it's available both in R and SQL, which deletes it from the repository. Now, I'm, I mentioned these functions before, so this might be familiar, but here are the grant and revoke functions for R and Python and SQL. And you can grant read privilege permission to another database user to a specified script in the script repository, or you can revoke the read privilege permission um, that has been granted to another user in the script in the script repository. Um, pretty simple. All right, now for some examples. All right, in this example, we'll create a function to build a GLM model on the Iris data set um, using OML for R and OML for Python. Um, which you can see next to each other. And then we save the scripts to the respective R and Python script repositories, and then set overwrite to true to replace any functions with the same name. And we can now view the contents from the script repository. And we can see the function are saved um, to the respective R and Python script repositories named build GLM dot mod and build underscore GLM mod. Um, the arguments for the ORI script list and OML.scriptDire includes a name parameter standing for the name of the script and the type of the parameter that retrieves the information about the certain scripts in the script repository. And we have different options for the types, which include the user type, which lists the scripts owned by the current user or the all type, which lists all the user global granted the current user has read access to. And then we have grant, which lists the scripts where the read privilege has been granted by the current user to other users. And then granted uh, lists the scripts with the read privileges uh, that has been granted by another user to the current so session user. So flip-flop. 
All right, now we can grant and revoke script access to a user um, from R and Python. And then in this example, we can assume we're logged in as OML user. And we'll be granting and revoking access to the OML user to user. And the first argument is the name of the script to grant or revoke access to. Uh, the type argument specifies whether the grant access is for a data store or a script. In this case, we specify RQ script and PyQ script. And then lastly, the user argument specifies which user to grant or revoke access to. Now we can invoke ore.scriptdrop or OML script drop to delete scripts uh, from the script repository. And to delete scripts from the script repository, specify the script name as inputs um, to the ORI script drop or OML.scriptDrop. Um, and these scripts that are eligible to be dropped are scripts owned by the user or even scripts granted to the user or even global scripts. Hope that's clear. All right, I think we're ready for the demo. All right, so here's our demo notebook for OML script repository. And we're using both OML for R and OML for Pi, comparing each of these processes side by side. And we're working with the Iris data set. Uh, and here we can see it being loaded on the left and the right. So there's the first one for R on the left, and then right being OML for Pi. And here we're also creating a simple linear model. And here at the output, we can sort of see a summary just like we expect. And um, now that we have our model, we actually want to store these as user-defined functions in the script repository. So here on the left, we're using ori.scriptcreate for the model, and then on the right, the UDFs need to be provided as a string to be saved to the script repository. And that's why we have the prefix str right here. And I don't think I mentioned this but explicitly, but OML for R and OML for Pi are stored in two separate script repositories, which have unique API connections. So they are completely independent. Now, if we want to use the SQL API to interact with OML for R, or OML for Pi repositories. Here we can specify the script using sys rq script create, um, labeling with the, the parameter dat, and then specifying global or overwrite as false and true. And then lim uh, and then similarly, we could do this um, on the right for Python using PyQ script create. And then invoking these UDFs with embedded execution for R is super simple. Um, just use table apply. There you go. And then specify the data set. Um, here we have our output for R and Pi, just as you expect it to be running locally. Now we want to next list the script repository contents. So if you remember earlier, we have five different um, five different types: um, glo user, global, grant, granted, and all. Uh, so first, let's use R to see what scripts I have available, um, specifying build lm dot mod, and that produces both the R generated and uh, the SQL generated name and function of the script. So now if we do this the same for Python, we can, it provides the name and the date, which is nifty. And then a couple others that we can't see, but it's super helpful, detailed. Um, then we can do this using the SQL API. Um, also, which where, where we run this select statement for the name and the script where we can specify the model name and in the statement. And if we want to do it for Python, we just specify the correct naming convention. So here we've got RQ scripts and then uh, PyQ scripts. Now let's actually load these scripts into memory so we can call them a little bit quicker. 
and then using ore.script load for R and then oml.script.load for Python, we can do now uh, just type the function to see the output and then say for Python, we have to actually print the string. All right, and then dropping a function requires just specifying the name of the script, the global parameter, and then um, last but not least, um, you know, the global parameter, um, and then the silent uh, parameter. So, so which the silent parameter, which is a, a logical value that displays the error if the drop doesn't work. And the default is actually false. So if you want to see it, um, if it works or not, then you need to specify, you know, similar to these functions up here. So for R, we do a try catch and then specify the UDF. Um, while the error produces actually an explanation of why the drop doesn't work and the default is false. Um, so if you want to see, um, you know, so because we, actually set the global to true here, um, which is incorrect. The, the, it's giving us an error. Um, the Python version has a similar response, but if we set it to false, as you can see here, um, then we are good. Um, but this time we did it silently. So we actually want to just double check and then we can run it again, um, looking at the script list. And we can actually see that there's only one, this the SQL version. And then granting and revoking um, access privileges on data stores. I kind of went to this pretty detailed earlier, but here we can have the grant privilege commands for both Python and, uh, and R. Um, so, Yep, just the syntax, the name, the type, and then the user. And we can do that for revoking access. Hope that was clear. And then I just cleaned up the notebook afterwards, but that's it for this. I'm gonna turn back to the PowerPoint. All right, we've got one more poll. Okay, thank you, Nick, for the demo. And then uh, with poll three, future use, what is uh, your likelihood of using the OML script repository in the future? Are you already using it and you continue to uh, plan to continue using it or maybe plan to use it in future projects or it's not quite right for you at this time? Well, that's great. We see uh, well over 80% that plan to use it in uh, future projects. A few came to learn about it, but uh, they're not going to be uh, using it actively. But that is really excellent uh, to, uh, to see the result for. Thanks again. And back to you, Nick, for to finish up the presentation. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, it's great to see everybody's feedback. Yeah, and I know when I, when I became, you know, used to the process, it, it became sort of second nature just to you know, have it accessible across users. So definitely it's a learned process and it's super simple so as I shown. Um, and, but if you want to learn more, we have a ton of information. You know, we've got our Oracle machine learning webpage. Um, we have blogs, we have a repo. There's actually a couple blogs. Sorry, I didn't throw the URL in the chat, um, but maybe Sherry, actually I've got it right here. But there's a, a great blog that was written for the script repository that just sort of simplifies everything that um, I was speaking about today. And then I've also got the link to the YouTube that I'll post. But I think I'm just going to pass it on to questions now. All right. Well, th thanks again, Nick. And um, we did have one question in the q and had to do with uh, where is the code executed, the Python code or, or R code in that? And Sherry, you had a response. Do you want to uh, comment uh, on that first? Yeah, sure, Mark. So on Autonomous Database, the R and Python code is run in containers behind the scenes. And for Oracle Database on premises, we're using the external procedure mechanism, which is XProc, to, and the database automatically will spawn those engines. The user doesn't have to do anything except to choose an embedded um, interface that is enabled for 
uh, parallelism. So that would be the, the row-wise, group-wise, and index-wise operations. And these can be run from R, Python, SQL, or the embedded REST APIs. Thank you, Sherry. One other thing that Nick highlighted in one of his examples uh, was the ability to invoke one user-defined function that's stored in the script repository in another one with embedded execution. And so that's something that you can do, but you'll need to load the, the user-defined function from the script repository within your other function. And that's uh, something that a rather interesting way of having some code reuse across you know, different uh, user-defined functions. I thank you for joining us for this session. And until next time, have a good week. Take care now.